Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com and today we will have a special episode for the first episode of the year uh, because next month we'll have the uh, monthly episode. Uh, I decided to move it a bit just because uh, mainly it's the end of the year and uh, I'm not really uh, at home so I cannot really record this episode immediately. Uh, so today the episode will be about uh, a presentation that was made Uh, at Medica, Medica 2023. It was made by Stefan Bolleininger. Uh, it's a presentation about heat map uh, for regulatory uh, uh, affairs. So mainly the idea is to explain to you um, how you can use heat map uh, to then uh, visualize what is the situation about your uh, company, making it like a dashboard, like a key, KPI, like a key um, uh, indicators for uh, for your department and then using that to put in place some actions or to improve your situation regarding your, dep your department. So I will um, let you uh, listen or watch to this um, uh, to this presentation because it's also on video, it's on video and audio uh, for the podcast. Uh, I have also placed on the sh on the show notes uh, the presentation link. Uh, so mainly you can just go there and download the presentation that uh, that St Stefan has uh, has made, uh, and don't hesitate if you have any uh, question. Um, I also place the LinkedIn uh, the LinkedIn profile of Stefan Bolaninger, so you can just go there, uh, link with him, and then ask him uh, any question that you have about uh, about heatmap. Okay, so I'll let you enjoy this uh, this episode with Stefan Bolaninger. Okay, thank you again for participating to this, uh, to watching for this episode or listening to it. Uh, so yeah, as I've said to you before, uh, you have the presentation uh, in the show notes. So you just go on the show notes and just um, click on the button to download that. Uh, and also don't hesitate if you have any question to also place any comments. And don't hesitate also to share that with your colleagues. So maybe they are interested about this kind of, of topic. And uh, yeah, I wish you really then a nice, nice day. about heat maps okay. and this is your time. Greetings ladies and gentlemen. Today I do not talk my usual thing about EU MDR and the involvement of MDR. Today I bring you something else. Today I bring you something really from the darkest side of my mind. Something what I usually use to take responsibilities about capacity to organize time to organize projects and products by a heat map. It's not my invention. I want to say that first, it's not my invention. The invention was made in the, nine, in the I think in the 1990s by software developers who utilize metrics, but I think that's the first time where it is used really for medical devices. About myself, I'm Stefan Bolleininger at Beyond Quality and I have the pretty great luck to work with all these exceptional cool guys at Beyond Quality and I claim myself to be a problem solver. Um, whenever we see obstacles, we try to solve them. That's my main interest. I want to solve problems. I really like riddles and all that stuff. So, and also, you can find me in a lot of things like the device made when you go on the rack at the end. You'll find me at the last space there about talking about the latest stage of MDR implementation, talking about my view on the regulation and the world. And yes, also, next to being a a consultant for many manufacturers. I'm also having one company which is a legal manufacturer itself. So whatever you need to go through in certifications, I did the same. I did the same not only one time but in many many times as auditor, as representative, as legal manufacturer of the whole spectrum. But that is something which gives me a bit more perspective to say, okay, as consultant I focused on one part of the world, but now I can do different parts as well. So, and what I want to tell you now is about taking control over workloads. 
I love documents. I really love them. Digitally or printed, I don't care. I really love documents and how to handle them, how to make a good medical device from documentation side. And that is what we need to take. But at the end, it is normally as regulatory, as regulatory affairs manager in a company, the project I get, yeah, what shall we do? We need to get concluded, we get everything done for our certification. The product and project manager approach us and say, hey, this is what you need to do, and they say, okay, first thing, what is the name of the product, what's the purpose, what is the claim, what do you want from me, project manager, tell me, what do you want? And then they say, okay, this is our technology, this is our idea, now I want to know what is your claim, what do you want to hear to get a classification. Yes, and they say, tell me about that, then they, they told me about the solutions, what they are currently doing, and a lot of their issues which they have. And then, at the end of the day, and that's uh, unfortunately why many regulatory affairs managers are not the most welcome people in the companies, we get a simple or a very small idea about what is my project planning. And the project manager unfortunately only cares about the biggest one. Do we reach CE? Do we reach US? Do we reach our time to market? They don't care about our problems. They don't care about the regulatory affairs problems. They only care, do we reach the time? And then, and then the funny thing, they care about electrical safety, they care about EMC, they care about biological safety, because it's R&D topics. But why not we, why we as regulatory affairs manager, why don't we get that attention? We had a lot fought with MDR, and that's MDR brought us a bit of help by clinical evaluation, the clinical evaluation topics, knowledge, and what we can do. And most likely is uh, signs are, in any case, on red. So that's usually what we deliver, and that's usually what our project manager wants us to have. But is that enough? As a regulatory affairs manager, I would say no, that's not sufficient. That is not the granularity we need to work with. You all know project plans from your approach from your existing projects? How many tasks or lines, if you use whatever gun chart or whatever, deal with technology, deal with development, deal with implementation, and how many deal with regulatory? So, this balance is not our friend. So we will need to find a solution. And that's what I wanted to show and wanted to go with and say, okay, we need to get from this granularity to something helpful to steer, control, and advise. We are not a project manager, but we, we are here to advise and to support them. And that happens also a lot if I am an external person. It comes in the same way. It helps me routing efficiency on the right project. And that is what we want to do. And that is actually the task what we are doing. We only have normally four, um, four or five lines. But actually, that's all where we are involved. The big one is the medical device one, whilst the small one is the IVD one. So, just for comparison reasons, there are two lines of them. And then we see lots of actions we need to do. There are clinical actions, there are development part of actions. Things what we need to deal with our developers. Things we need to do with them. Also things what we need to take on with our, um, with our product managers, which is at the end of the day, so the worst group to cooperate with in the product development because they take every time more claims and more ideas. So it's good for business, so it's good for bringing the product further, but it's hard to grip them and work on the product. Therefore, we need to align, we need to plan, we need to organize. And when I think about all of these tasks, that's what I usually give everyone as a hint in your project plan, hey, don't look Output, uh, don't look at the end of the product and say, this is from development and the, your reach of the product-wise. Look back and go artifact-wise. Go back one step and say, okay, my level of granularity will be artifacts. And that's why, and that's how also the heat map comes into play. But looking into the artifacts, and I can look into lots of lots of lots of artifacts. Actually millions, and that's why we, as a company, utilizing the regulatory heat map, or the heat map at all. 
normally it's not as sad, it's not my venture, it was from software development. You have seen, so whenever, this is also a topic which might be interesting for 62304, um, there is a lot of things dealing about metrics, metrics in code, like lines of code per function, lines of code per file, cyclomatic complexity according to McCabe, cyclomatic complexity at all, then additional things like functionality, code coverage, branch coverage, unit testing coverages, and all that, and that's cool, it gives you numbers. Number, I love numbers. I love numbers on that end. And from the software development side, it brings you many cases the way to bring it into a big of a diagram. So to say, okay, this file, six functions, this section, this unit, item or system, has the following spot, whereas higher complexity, less code commentation, less unit tests. And the software developer says, this end, yes, it's okay. If I have a higher complexity and lower amount of unit testing, what does it mean? Yeah, I have a higher risk of fail. I have a higher risk of fail in that area. I need to do something about it. Software development, especially class C, 6 to 3 or 4 software development, do that on a daily basis. They do not see it in that amount to say this is our heat map, actually. However, there are tools who nearly draw that out like skyscrapers, which makes it quite cool, where you can see it like little land maps and see where you have a high coverage, a low coverage, and that can focus your attention to a particular point. And that's exactly what I do for my projects when I work on a project. Whenever I have a task or I think about a task, I give that task some kind of criticality based on my experience, what I had in the past, based on the company's majority on that particular topic, and on the particular outcome of, the, of this artifact missing or failing. And that leads to that I've, since I am do that in interaction with my team and on a quite easy basis, I just have four, four colors in here. Low risk, medium project risk, high project risk, and something which really will lead to big problems. And this is how I try to combine it and manage my risks based on that artifacts. What does it mean when I have that control, when I have the knowledge about the particular risks, then I can steer them better. So, and then comes my natural as a 4971 risk manager. And I say, hey, if I have risks, what need I, do I need to do? I need to take mitigations. And with mitigations, I can work. So then I can try to control my risks, or even better, I can look for the future what to do with that. So level out all of your require of your required documents or content into particular sections where you feel confident, less confident, or also where you might get problems with capacities. Capacity is not only effort. Capacity is also knowledge for effort. So, not only thinking about, okay, I have sufficient resources for regulatory affairs, for instance, for doing a particular thing. If that's biocompatibility and to have me as a resource on it, yeah, you're doomed. I have no clue about biocompatibility. Not really. So, but my le level of knowledge is limited. So, I am a resource in that area, however, it's the wrong one. So, taking that very, very considerable into account. I see, unfortunately, lots of products and projects fail because not having the correct resource and the right demand at the right point. Why? Because we don't dig into the raw data, we don't dig into all that, what is presented in a smaller way. So we need to go with that as well. And thinking about that, what you can imagine during a normal product, it's way, way, way bigger. It's way bigger what you need to take into account. So it's not only a small one with the method, what I explained here with the, the method, how you can do it, so this is a cheat sheet to make it really simple, but that is actually the list of cards during a normal project, what you have. Those guys who use Scrum or Agile will love you for that, that you do that way. But that's still the point, same point. We need to deal into that 
interactively. And one thing, one thing, because you see, hey, that's all less parts, that's true. Each product with a product standard or something specific will increase by each standard you need to use. Standard for sterilization, standard for electrical safety, standard for radio equipment devices, equipment, radio equipment device testing, radio equipment device testing, basics, human exposure, da, 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 the complete list as well. And that's something. Please do not forget MDCG guidances to add to that list. Why? They can be unfortunately harmful. Say it's called, yeah, we are just guidance documents, legally non binding. Yeah, good idea. However, reality works different. Reality tells us the MDCG is applicable for the product and we need to take that into account. So, whenever you have, deal with it. So, at the end of the day, what happens? Oh, one second. That's from the regulatory standpoint, and then I dig one deeper to make it a bit more broader. I go also into those topics which can be done into another way. So from audit perspective, from a quality management perspective, as well as for the perspective of the post-market. All of those parts are identifiable as points in the risk, in the heat map. Depending on your company, I'm pretty sure you will have loads, loads, loads more of the particular times. But that is the smaller and the bigger, as a better granularity I can give you right now to make sure we get it on the right track. For presentation purpose, that is a very good and sufficient way. So, now we know what to challenge and what to look for. And this that's now take, well, taking into the account when we have managed and thought about these tiles, what I wanted to show and I wanted to see this is we need to align that into the project. So make regulatory visible for the project manager. And that happens sometimes in a very simplified gun chart or in any kind of project planning. And that tells me when we have a higher look for risks, we need to go for. For instance, as I tell the red ones are dangerous risks, with the problem of the CE coming out or CE failing, the other ones, the yellow ones, are medium risks where we can manage. The gray ones are uh, could be leading to a problem, but not that most likely, or the problem will be coverable. So white ones are not anymore on that because I want to show where we have problem, where we need resources. Scaling your company, you have more projects. The more projects will scale at that point where you have the least, the least amount of resources available. And that is what we can make transparent, what we can make clear, and we can show in a simple and structured way. It is now when I see that, okay, for this particular product, for this project, classification, yeah, there might be a, a small disconcern with the notified body. However, I think we can manage that. If it's way to be, it does not matter. At the end of the day, that's no, not a problem. However, on that, we need to decide here now very clear, can we go equivalence, which is currently, in the latest developments, better than it was since half a year ago. So, can we go equivalence? Do we have data? Do we need new data? How do we, do we handle that? And this is something which can be taken into account at the beginning already. So what I want to give is the information, okay, for each of the points where we have a higher risk or a medium risk, we need to find a mitigation. No matter what the mitigation is right now. Don't go into the solution, just stay on the problem. Don't go into the solution in here. So stay on the problem and then see what is your timeline risk and what will be the outcome. As normally, the regulatory affairs managers don't go into their details because I see for myself the project manager does not ask me and as a regulatory affairs manager, I don't want the project manager to ask me because if they tell me, I say, I need to give them data about time, when will be finished, yeah, when will we reach CE? Yeah, it's the day we're done. So, that is something I cannot give right now at that point. Therefore, I need to make it a bit more visible to bring them the right track and the right opportunity into it. All right. That streams it through a time zone and that gives me the possibility to take a particular 
spot in time to help me to find the right or the clear needed capacity and what kind of capacity as told specific capacities or specific risks need specific capacities and therefore we can handle them on that end. And that helps us during the complete procedure. All right, so something what we sometimes forget at that point is sometimes it's a good idea to take a risk. If we take a small risk also on the regulatory documentation, the regulatory affairs planning, which helps us to bring us into the next step faster, brings us a better reward in, based on time, and therefore time is revenue at the end. If we can get this, then sometimes it's good to take a risk. So, don't always go in the safe way. Sometimes you can take also into the reward to say higher reward by a bit of a higher risk. It can be challengeable, but we can go that way. If it fails, we have as a backup anyway. So don't forget about that in that way because that's very important also to talk about the potential reward based on reduced timelines or reduced or, the, uh, or, um, uh, re, uh, or a earlier time to market and therefore earlier bring it to the, into the, uh, to the humans and getting the money first. So, as one of the examples, I want to show you the current MDCG guidance. We have a very nice MDCG guidance document which is talking about medical electri or electrical products which are not medical devices which can be used together with medical device software, which is way great. However, it's a non-binding recommendation. However, this non-binding recommendation is quite a good thing. It gives us a lot of information about what needs to be covered. For what is the content? So you go through the guidance as a regular affairs manager and deal with the guidance. Say, hey, where does it have my impact? Where is my impact for that guidance document? What do I need to handle at a certain time, at a certain point in time? And then go through. So I went through that and said, hey, does it make sense to have particular points and say, yes, sure. And then I see, oh, those points, those topics in my overall procedure can be impacted and others not. If it's not impacted, then I don't have a problem. If it will be impacted, it might lead to a problem. So for, for this particular one, one of the instances is that, the main, that there could be the, re, the, the possibility based on the guidance that uh, electrical product could be regarded as a medical device or needs to be controlled as a medical device because of that certain interaction with the software. So the smartphone app which utilizes sensorix from the device might not be so standalone anymore. Therefore it needs to be very very carefully challenged and therefore it could, part, could be very important for the classification but I say hey I get control. However I utilize that additional framework. I cannot only claim, yes, I use the existing Apple smartwatch. I need to go more into the detail, and therefore I might get license issues. Things we need to cover. Things we need to elaborate on. And therefore that can be impacting as well, and therefore it gets additional line to the impact. And that's not something we should not forget about it in the overall procedure. All right. So, but I also want to give you one for the, um, for the point of the, um, um, uh, of the quality management system. Because I want to run it backwards. Because now comes the benefit. We don't do that only for making sure we have capacity and control. We want to grab the data for the next one. And the next round will be, I can take that data from the existing knowledge into a procedure. When it comes from my procedure, I can control it because I can control my procedure. If I am able to control my procedure as it is, I can change it. I can make it better because that's performance. So the benefit of dealing with all the data and that information will be that we get the option to get a better performance based on what we have achieved in the past. I'll show you then one example which makes that way more clear. But that is the big thing about what we have, about this existing data and how it will be impacting. So, 
I take data now from deviation, so that uh, from what we have on technical file reviews. I look into that, but I changed, as you can see, I changed my explanations. And I say, okay, for a technical file review, to have it in a bad way, red is five deviations per technical file review. Yellow one is greater than two, but smaller than five. And gray problem is one deviation per technical documentation. So then I scroll that, scroll my technical documentation, and find out, okay, that's my average. Averagely, I have a bit of problems with the risk management plan, but hey, it's one deviation per product, no big thing. Same with the validation report, but I have a problem with my reports, my simulative evaluation. Things, development and regulatory, normally does not control from one product to another. Therefore, that's good, that's existing data, which helps you to bring your product or the strategy for the next product into the next better way. And then you can handle, because then you know, okay, it's the next time I should focus on these things where I have problems. Focus leads to performance. It's the same technology, same idea about audit findings. When I look into the same cards and see my audit findings, whoa, okay, I have a smaller amount of audit findings in internal audits, but a big of them are in internal training. Where do I need to take my focus on it? But who takes, you don't need to answer that, but who takes that information to the next year? Who takes information up into the next year? Oh, I did so, so the following capers. These are my capas and that's it. Did you, did you take the capas from the last year as well? Do you see trending into your performance criteria? Do you see trending into your product things? So, what will be the outcome? My outcome will be focus on the red, red six. So, so I have the title. Focus on that red field and take that red field as the highest thing. Okay, if I, all those things, and now comes performance is not only making everything more, but performance means also reduce all of that you don't need. And therefore, if I drop my audit and inspection rate for those things within the legal framework, where I have control all over, like supplier listing, SCPs, these are classifications, product registrations, and focus on all those things where I have problems, I can be more efficient. What I give you right now as information is take your data from the past years, find out where are your weaknesses over the years, not in the one audit, but over all of the audits you had in the last five or six years, and now make the next audit plan based on that criteria. You can reduce your level of surveillance and your level of audits based on that. Outcomes, it's a nice image, but I make here a white one, it's better to copy. So, but I wanted to have something highlighted, so something with a bit which brings you to our silver lining to say, yes, we have good outcomes as well, but same, the same topic is on that here, but to make it more readable, risks and reward calculation for projects is a quite challenging thing, and you need to take your knowledge from existing projects into new ones. And then the extremely important point is that you make a very clear segregation of work items to handle your process and that can help you from the existing data towards the future audits and your assessments to make your life easier and bring a better performance of your internal procedures of surveillance and internal procedures for regulatory affairs into your project management. Regulatory affairs will be more visible Regulatory affairs will be clearer and that and to be described for the other departments and you can get the benefit of streamlining it into that real need you actually have. Thank you. I wish you a very good afternoon. I hope it was clear what I wanted to intend about that and I will be very happy to answer all of your questions to mitigate the risks in development, regulatory, and all the procedures and bring ourselves into the next majority grade utilizing a heat map to stay focused on those things which are of concerns and remove those things you don't need. Thank you.
Tchau.